Hey, how's it going fight fans? Welcome to Mind for Combat. If you're new to the channel, my name's Rohan, and this is my platform where I do fight sports related content. So if you're new here, why don't you help me grow my platform? All you have to do is subscribe to that channel, like the video if you like it, and maybe hit that bell icon so you get notified every time I upload a video. With that said, in this video, I'll be giving you guys my official full fight breakdown of Dustin Poirier versus Conor McGregor. Now, if you haven't already, I've already done a couple of videos on this fight on why Dustin Poirier destroys Conor McGregor and why Conor McGregor destroys Dustin Poirier. But now it's time to look at the fight as a whole, not from one perspective or the other, but just look at the whole uh, fight holistically and give you guys my honest breakdown of how I see this fight going. So if you guys um, were a bit annoyed about that, I guess this would be a bit more to your liking. Anyways, this is a very fun fight. A very fun and very important fight in the world of mixed martial arts. Firstly, we've got the return of Conor McGregor. And if, if his attitude or behaviour has been any indication of things to come, it seems to me that he's in a good headspace and actually wants to make a run at mixed martial arts again. Now, there was a time in 2015 when Conor McGregor was just, just a man. He was absolute fire. He wanted to fight everyone. He tore through the featherweight division. But since then, it hasn't really been the case. Now, obviously, 2016 was a good campaign for him as well. Maybe not the same as 2015, but it was still a good campaign. But since then, it hasn't been the same. Actually, since 2016, when he won the lightweight championship as a mixed martial artist over the course of the next five years, he's just been one and one with that one win being against Don Cerrone. And of course, he got finished against Khabib Nurmagomedov. Dustin Poirier on the other hand, and this is very important to note, has gone seven and one since Conor McGregor won the um, lightweight world championship and uh, won no contest as well. So the activity has been vast and the wins on Dustin Poirier's record since that night when Conor McGregor won the title have just been so incredible. So those are important things to remember as we're going into the breakdown. But how will that impact the fight? Well, let's take a look and have a look at this. So they're both in their physical prime. They're both only 31 and 32 years old respectively, both young men, not dissimilar in age, they're in their physical primes. And actually they should be peaking about now as mixed martial artists. We got tons and tons of time off with both of these guys if they continue to keep fighting. Dustin Poirier has a professional mixed martial arts record of 26 wins, 6 losses and 1 no contest. And he fights Conor McGregor who's 22 wins and 4 losses. Now both of these guys are trialed and tested main event fighters, been around at the top of the division for a long time. These ain't guys that are going to be thrown off by the spotlight or the main, main event position. Experience will not be a factor in this fight. They both stand at 5 foot 9 inches tall. Dustin Poirier has a 72 inch reach and Conor McGregor has a 74 inch reach. To describe their styles a little bit, Dustin Poirier is a guy who likes to come out there and throw hands, he likes to get into boxing fights, he doesn't really throw too many kicks and the kicks that he does throw, they're not, well, they're not the most lethal kicks but he has great boxing, he has great power in his hands, he's very dangerous, he's very durable and tough and he likes to get in them long worn out battles, he's well rounded, he can wrestle, he can grapple, he can do it all. Where he shines though is in his conditioning and as the fight wears on and his opponent slows down, Dustin Poirier gets more and more dangerous. Conor McGregor conversely is definitely a front runner when it comes to fighting, he does his best work in the earlier rounds, but he's also a striker and where he shines at his best is with, the, with his movement, his unorthodox movement, his punching, his boxing in particular and that, the punch that stands out to me is his left hook. Although, you know, to me it's always been about power, um, timing more so than power. He's not like Rumble Johnson where one shot can turn off your lights. It's about how he hits you, when he hits you, and where it gets you. And I think that's what makes the biggest standout point for me in terms of Conor McGregor. Now, let's look at some of their key wins. For Dustin Poirier over the course of his lightweight resume, it's just been incredible. Obviously, he has some good run at February as well. But at lightweight is where he's really shined to me. Now he's got wins over the likes of Bobby Green, Jim Miller and standout wins against the likes of um, Anthony Pettis, former lightweight champion, Justin Gaethje, former UFC interim title holder who went on to win the interim title after losing to Dustin Poirier actually. He's of course uh, beaten Max Holloway, Max Holloway is a great great win and um, Eddie Alvarez, he had a great war with Eddie Alvarez in his own right and beat Eddie Alvarez. Conor McGregor's got a great resume, I think that's one thing that you can never take away from Conor, he's obviously stopped Dustin Poirier himself in emphatic fashion in the first round. He's of course beaten Chad Mendes, Jose Aldo, he stopped the legendary run, uh, uh, win streak of Jose Aldo. Of course he came up to the lightweight and he beat Eddie Alvarez in a humiliating title win. And of course he's had his uh, wins over Nate Diaz and uh, Donald Cerrone as well, so all great wins there. The issues for Dustin Poirier coming into this fight is really his fighting style. The way he fights, his willingness to brawl and exchange means he's very hittable. We've seen what happens when Conor McGregor hits Dustin Poirier. 
those opportunities will present themselves to Conor again. It's going to be so interesting to see how he handles it. The biggest issue for Conor McGregor is going to be inactivity, in my opinion, coming into this fight. Like I said, he's only fought twice over the course of the last four years in mixed martial arts. Well, one of those wins was Donald Cerrone. Um, no disrespect to Donald Cerrone, but he's nowhere near the caliber of uh, Dustin Poirier at this stage of his career. So that's important to note. The X Factor for Dustin Poirier, conversely, will be his activity, the fact that he has been active, the fact that he has been fighting, and the activity, um, the X Factor for Conor McGregor is going to be his punching power and the damage that he can do with his left hand at any one point. So that's very important for us to know. Let's get into my predictions. So this is a fight that is really intriguing to me for a couple of reasons. Firstly, is the questions around Dustin Poirier's mentality coming into this fight. How does he cope with fighting Conor McGregor, who flatlined him in the first round with ease the first time they fought? And mentally, in terms of Conor McGregor, where is he mentally coming into this fight? Is he truly back? Is he truly motivated? Because it's hard to get that same hunger he had back in 2015 when he's achieved everything he wanted to achieve. Why would he need to be hungry anymore when he's got everything that he wanted to get? So it's, it's so different. Also, is the game plan that Dustin Poirier adopts. Does he come out here and try to wrestle with Conor from early? Or is he going to come out there and get into a striking match with Conor? And how does he feel about striking with Conor? And for Conor, it's also about game plan. What does he want to do? Does he employ a movement-based strategy? Or does he get into a brawl with Dustin Poirier, trusting his hands? But if he doesn't get the finish, it becomes a big, big problem in the later rounds. Now, this fight to me is a tale of two fights. Firstly... There's two scenarios and I'm going to give you both scenarios and I'm going to give you my predictions on which scenario I think is more likely. The first scenario is this, that Conor McGregor comes out with Dustin Poirier, Dustin Poirier being Dustin Poirier is willing to engage in a brawl to get into a striking match. Conor McGregor takes advantage of the openings that Dustin Poirier will inevitably give him and he hurts Dustin Poirier early which we know Dustin Poirier can get hurt and has been finished by Conor previously and I think he rocks Dustin Poirier early puts him down and maybe finishes it within the first two or three rounds. Conversely, Dustin Poirier is now a lot more durable at 155, which is true. He's also a lot smarter and defensively he's sharper. So if he goes in there, he doesn't get into those brawls or exchanges with Conor McGregor as such, but he's wiser and he fights a more methodical game. And as the fight goes on, he starts to come out of his shell a bit more, st uh, starts putting more pressure on Conor McGregor. And in rounds four or five, four and five even, he absolutely dominates to take a decision because Conor McGregor has shown to slow down in the later rounds and that may not be something that Conor McGregor can fix. Now what do I think happens? I think Conor McGregor will come out and I think Conor McGregor will have a lot of success early. Conor McGregor seems to be very motivated and Dustin Poirier has been in the game a long time, has taken a lot of damage and we know he's very hittable. The stuff that cannot be changed, the X's and O's of this fight is Dustin Poirier's defensive shall we say, inadequacies and Conor McGregor's precision and timing and power that he carries. Those things do not change. Now, of course, it's very possible that the latter scenario does play out, but I'm going to go with the former and say that Conor McGregor is going to have success early. I think Conor McGregor will land early. I think Conor McGregor is going to be able to clip Poirier. He's going to hurt Poirier early and he's going to do a lot of damage to be able to get the finish and officially announce himself as being back in the top of the world division now is this a hundred percent prediction no i'm not sure on this one at all just because there's so many invariables and factors that i cannot touch and that i cannot pinpoint in this fight it's so hard to break this one down but if i'm to make a prediction for the sake of the video i'm going to go with conor mcgregor landing early and getting the win so guys for my official prediction you've seen my um, videos on why one person destroys the other i'm going with conor mcgregor to get the victory here and establish himself as the other half of the top contenders fight for the lightweight championship and you know his opponent's gonna have to be charles Oliveira. can't wait for that fight but anyways guys i'd love to know how you guys see this fight going um uh, let me know if you enjoyed the breakdown and um thank you for watching if you're new here remember to like subscribe share all that jazz thank you for watching guys i'm rohan and this is mindful combat